In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, we're looking at another vintage logo design in Photoshop, series 4 out of 5. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tut, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a very simple Photoshop design, a vintage logo design in Photoshop, similar to series one, two and three, which we've done in the past weeks. So if you're new to this channel, do have a look as well at those tutorials. So yeah, let's get right away into it. As you guys can see, we're working again with just one or two different text layers, a shape here, then a custom shape and as well, we're going to work a bit on that background. So yeah, let's get right away into it. First of all, I'm going to go to File, New, and then now we're going to create a new document, basically a new canvas size. Now I've said this in the past quite a lot. I normally have my stuff saved. Also have a look again on the tutorial on the channel here. There's another tutorial teaching you how to set up canvas sizes if you're completely new to this and have no idea what's going on. Then if you do what know what's going on here, you can just, like me, select your saved one and let's get into it. I'm also going to work now again with 1920 to 1080 canvas size because this is for me currently the easiest in terms of the tutorials. So just bear that in mind as well. You can also copy paste whatever I have over here. I'm also going to switch over here to a black uh, content like black background color so I don't have a white one because I need a black one. I'm going to hit create and right away we have a brand new layer here. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger. I'm going to double click on here and just take that layer away from being locked to also renaming it just to background or black. Maybe black would be even better. Okay, so we have our first layer. Great. On top of that, I'm going to drag in now an image. So obviously you can find all of this work and all the PSDs, everything that I do in the Tronics Design Media Package is for $4.99 a month and you get everything on a weekly, monthly update, actually everything we create for this channel and as well everything that has been there since the last three years. So it's a ton of content you can get there. Okay, so I'm gonna drag in my image over here, basically meaning I have now an image that I pop in and it's right away on the right canvas size. Yours might be a bit bigger. Just hold shift, take one of the anchor points here and equally expand it so it fits nicely in and doesn't distort. Okay, so that's my image for now. It's uh, gonna be a coffee logo. It's gonna be about coffee brands. So I actually also felt like adding a background image that sticks to that coffee uh, badge. Okay, so the next step I'm going to do is go to adjustments here. If you don't have adjustments in your work panel, just go to window and select adjustments over here. I will go to selective color adjustment layer, go into the neutral tones, which we see over here. And now also we'll just tweak this a little slightly, bit of a brown effect. Magenta, well, like just a plus three or so, very slightly. Yellows, plus five. And then the blacks, yeah, we'll give it like a plus one because I still want to take down the opacity now of this layer. Take that all the way down to like 30, maybe a little bit more, 36. Yeah, great. Okay, that's basically it. Now I'm going to select all of these layers. Again, I'm working on a Mac, guys, so I'm going to press Command and select all these layers and then press Command G to put it together in a group. Uh, if you're on a Windows computer, please press control when I say command. So for the Windows guys, it's command, sorry, Windows guys is control G for Mac command G. And then double click, I'm just gonna rename this to background. Okay, and great. Now let's go into the text layers. Again, like every time I'm gonna go to view, new guide and select 50%. So I can just select roughly where my center point is of my canvas here. And I'm gonna do this twice, vertical and horizontally. And now I'm gonna go and select the text tool. You can also find it here on the left hand side from the text palette, sorry, from the tool palette. And I'm gonna first of all write minus Cape Town. So that's basically the city now where it's at. This obviously is completely also up to you how you wanna do your logo. It doesn't mean you need to put the city name there. It's, it's up to you. Okay, so Cape Town, and as I realized, yeah, that one should have been curved. So I can scratch this whole thing. Let's go and create first a, another guideline to do a curve. So first of all, rulers, go to view, make sure your rulers are on so you can see your rulers here at the top. And I'm just gonna drag with the move tool a, another guideline down. So I'm gonna drop one roughly over here and then just grab another one somewhere over here. 
like so. Okay, and this you can do completely as you like. There's no specific method of how to do and not. So you guys can be a bit more uh, specific if you like under view and just say new guide and then measure it with your percentages. I'm just gonna do it freestyle. Select the anchor point over here and another one over here. Keep on holding and I'm just gonna drag a nice curve over here like so, great. Then I'm gonna select the text tool, T on the keyboard. I'm going to select the path, click on here. Oh, that was wrong. Let's do it one more time until you see this little square disappear. Okay, click on there, great. Now I'm gonna say minus, Cape Town. We're gonna to write the whole thing again. And another minus. Okay, select the whole thing and I first wanna make this font nice and big. So let's go with something like 20. Okay, that's way too big. Let's go with like 15. Yeah, 15 is good. Okay, then also I wanna select the font which is Mozart Bold. 15 font size, a white foreground color please. And also my tracking should be maybe around, uh, let's see, 400. Yeah, well, that's also fine, 400. Then I will just do another spacer in here, another one, so it's a bit more even. I will still shift this a bit around. And going to accept it. Okay, guys, also the font here, you will not find that in the Tronics Design Media package. Uh, this is of the web. I cannot sell these to you. These are not owned by me. Do have a look down below in the description. I've linked everything for you guys so you can find these font names and also find the font so you can redesign on top of my PSD that you're getting out of the media package. Okay, I'm gonna take the move tool here. Just move it slightly over. If you like, you can see it's a bit skewed still. So what I'll do is just press Command R, sorry, Command T, and that will then bring me in through the Transform tool. So I can literally just transform it and like rotate it slightly a bit more so it just looks genuinely right. Okay, accept that. And now I'm gonna go over and create the next word. So again, select the text tool, make it nice and big. And I'm gonna write here wood stock. Okay, but here's a little secret. Let's write it all in big, wood stock, because this font is a bit different, so to say. So I wrote wood stock, that's now basically the suburb name or whatever. So I selected it and also going to now select the font, which is go high something here, go bold, high regular. Again, you can find this all down below in the description. Then let's take the size. I think it was gonna be like 50, 48. Yeah, 48 is fine. White foreground color, please. Okay, and also the tracking, I'm gonna set that to just like 200. Yeah, so it fits nicely in with Cape Town. That's 400, 500 almost, so will fit nicely. Okay, but now it doesn't look too cool because the font is all written in capital, but that's the nice part about this font. This font is exactly the same in small letters as in capital letters. So what helps literally is just selecting it and I'm gonna write everything again. I'm just gonna leave the W and the K in capital letters. So I'm just gonna write wood stock. Okay, let's take that C out and hit enter. And right away you can see it, you have the W and the K bigger than the rest of the font, which then also means you don't need to scale it and anything, it's the font itself, which is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna move this slightly down still. I'm also happy that my endings here almost fit right away, even though just doing it with my eye, with freestyling, not actually checking the guidelines so well, so I'm happy with that. Great, another selection. We're gonna take another word here. This time I'm gonna write coffee. Let's just try to see stuff here. Make it a bit smaller, so it really said koruf, <laughs> whatever that is. Coffee, and I'm gonna write coffee roastery. Okay, roastery, and going to select obviously a different font again. So for this one, I want a bit of a curly font with something else that stands out. And they have selected the Thirsty Script Extra Bold Demo, wow, such a long name. You'll find it again down below in the description. I've linked it, Thirsty Script, Extra Bold, etc., etc. Then regular, I'm gonna make it like the font size about 15 and white foreground color, but my tracking is horrible. I'm gonna just make it two, no, actually zero. Okay, accept that, hit enter on the keyboard. And I'm also gonna move that slightly here into the position. Okay, I actually also noticed that my background is not that dark actually. So 36, I'll make it a bit more. I'm like gonna go to like 29. 
yeah, that looks a bit better. So just this whole logo design stands out a bit more on top of your background. Okay, great. I'm gonna take uh, again the text tool, make another selection here and just write since, all in capital letters, please. 1972 and we'll also again select I think mod strut so it just looks the same and mod strut bold if I can let's switch that to bold great font size we could maybe go with like a seven uh, maybe let's put it like an eight okay great and then tracking I would also do that 500 so it's nice and wide great so it again fills up with the cape down at the top cool put that over here just moving it around with the cursors again. Great. All right, so that's basically it for the text. Let's take all the text layers. I'm just holding Command again here on the keyboard and pressing Command J again, Windows user, Control J, and we're just gonna write here text. Great, so last step that I still wanna do now is get my shapes in and a little bit of some beans, some dots, all of that great stuff. Let's actually take sense a little bit more over here. Okay. Now, let's create a new empty layer, and I'm gonna go to the marking tool, select the elliptical marking tool. I'm also gonna zoom in super close so we can see it. Press M again on the keyboard, hold Shift this time, very sure, hold Shift, and just click and drag. So we're creating a little ball down here. Okay, then right click inside of that, fill, and we're gonna select foreground color, which is white, hit OK, and Command D, get out of the selection, and voila, we have a little circle over here. Now, layer one, I'm just gonna press Command J, duplicate that, and move it all the way over to the other side, like so, so we have two dots on each side, and that looks kinda cool. Great, and now I'm gonna go and create a new empty layer, and just go to my shape library, and basically going to get some beans, so that all fits together, but you can obviously add a coffee machine, you can add whatever you like, you can add any, little element here at the top, whatever you like. I've added a bean because I've gotten it out of my um, shape library. Again, there's a ton of more shapes in the Tronix Design Media Library. I think there's over 500 different shapes that you can download on an instant click. It's $4.99 a month. You get everything from my shape, so you have everything you don't need to redesign. Uh, unfortunately, this one is a bit empty, but there's a ton. Have a look on the website. Okay, I'm gonna select this now and also white foreground color on a new layer here. I'm just gonna hold shift and make a nice little bean over here. Like so, great. I'm also gonna hide the guidelines here. So basically command shift and H, that is to hide the path of that shape layer. I'm gonna take the move tool, move that a little bit over here. Okay, like so. And now I'm just gonna basically duplicate that layer. Just command J, have another bean over here. Press Command T, hold Shift, take your anchor point here, and make it a bit smaller just so it looks like two beans over there. And then obviously you can be creative and add more, four, five, depends on you. Great, that's basically it. Let's go to View, clear all the guides. I wanna zoom out a bit to get a look and feel for this whole design. And I think the only thing I can still do is take these two shapes, I can take Sins and Coffee Roastery, and move that a little bit up, a little bit to the left. Great, like so. And that's it, guys. I'm gonna just take all of these layers with Command again, holding that. Press Command G one more time, and I'll write Shape. So you can download this PSD and work straight off it if you like. Okay, guys, that's basically it for this week's tutorial. Again, do let me know in the comments down below what you think of this series. Give me a thumbs up if you really like this. And also, yeah, have a look at the website, have a look at the Tronics Design Media Package, everything you're getting in there. And once again, thanks again for watching. I'll see you all in the last series of this tutorial series. And thanks again for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. See ya!